Congratulations on the purchase of your wall water filter and salt-free water softener. Your system works in three stages. First, water will enter the well water filter, which will eliminate iron, sulfur, and manganese from your well water. Next, the sediment filter will eliminate any particulate. Then, the water will enter the softening tank, which will neutralize any remaining particulate. This video will walk you through the installation process. The system will consist of the following parts. The well water filter with a jacket the salt-free softening tank, 50 feet worth of drain line, the tank head for the softening tank, the pre-filter housing, the sediment filter to place within that housing, a spanner wrench, four MNPT fittings, two bypass valves, the electronic head for the well water filter, the power supply for the electronic head, a gasket and lube for the pre-filter housing, a mounting bracket for the pre-filter, and a hose clamp for the drain line. The supplies recommended to complete the install will include four 1-inch corrugated water connectors, three 1-inch by 3-inch long PVC nipples, one roll of plumber's tape, 1-inch threaded connectors for your pre-plumb, a 1-inch threaded PVC shutoff valve, and some zip ties. Your well water filter comes shipped with a jacket. To install it, simply wrap it around the tank, and then you will zip it up around the tank. Also note that the jacket can be placed after the installation has been completed. The first step in the installation is attaching the electronic head. Begin by unscrewing the cap at the top of the tank. The blue cap on the pipe inside the tank will also need to be removed. Both caps can be discarded. There is a small circular opening on the bottom of the electronic head that will align with the pipe that's inside of the tank. Once aligned, go ahead and set the electronic head onto the pipe. You will need to apply downward pressure to get the threads to catch. Thread the electronic head clockwise and continue turning it until it's fully tightened. The tank will now be rotated to gain access to the connections on the back side of the head. The bypass valve will now be attached. It has rubberized fittings that will fit into the connections on the tank head. Press the bypass valve in the position and then fully tighten both of the connectors to seat it in position. The MNPT fittings will now be connected to the other side of the bypass. They have a rubberized connector that will insert into the opening and a fastener that will also need to be fully tightened. Repeat this with both of the MNPT fittings. Apply plumber's tape to the threads on the other end of the fittings. The salt-free softening tank will also need to be prepped. The bypass valve with the red levers will need to be attached to it. Insert the rubberized fittings into the connections and then fully tighten the connectors to fasten it in place. A pair of MNPT fittings will also be attached to the bypass on the salt-free softening tank. Plumber's tape will also need to be applied to the threads on the other end of these fittings. With the tanks prepped, you can now proceed to prepping the pre-filter. Unscrew the top of the tank to remove it. Inside, you will find the gasket and the lube that's required for the next step. There is a groove indented along the top of the housing that will receive the gasket. Go ahead and lay the gasket in place. Apply some of the provided lubricant along the edge of the gasket, and then spread it out to ensure that it's evenly coated. The gasket will then be flipped over and reseated into the groove. Apply the remainder of the lubricant and once again spread it out to ensure that it's evenly coated. The provided sediment filter will now be installed. The opening of the filter will rest on a nipple that's on the inside bottom of the pre-filter housing. Drop the sediment filter into the housing and then make sure that it sits flush. It should sit just below the surface. The lid of the housing has guides that will ensure that the sediment filter properly aligns when you put it back on. Go ahead and replace the lid and then fully tighten it onto the pre-filter housing. 
PVC nipples will now be installed on the in and the outlet on the top of the housing. To ensure that there are no leaks, plumber's tape will need to be applied to the threads on the PVC nipples before you install them. Thread the PVC nipple in place and fully tighten by hand as tight as possible. Repeat these steps on the opposite side. A pipe wrench or a pair of pliers will now be required to fully tighten the PVC nipples into the housing. The final step in prepping the pre-filter housing is to apply some more plumber's tape onto the threads on the other ends of the PVC nipples. Your pre-filter will now be mounted using the provided bracket. Due to the weight, you will need to mount the bracket to a stud. Once you identify the optimal location, go ahead and mark out the holes to be pre-drilled. A 3 16 drill bit can then be used to pre-drill the holes for the mounting bracket. Locate the bag of the provided bolts and washers, and then use a half-inch socket to secure the bracket to the wall. Before mounting the pre-filter to the bracket, take a look at the top to identify the inlet and outlet direction of the water to ensure that it's being properly oriented. It will then be secured to the bracket with four of the provided bolts. If you haven't done so already, you will need to tap into your pre-plumb. Please be sure to shut off the water to the home before performing these steps. Also note that it's a recommendation to install a bypass ahead of the system to allow for easy maintenance. Expose your pre-plumb and then install the 1-inch threaded adapters onto each of the sides. Identify the side of the pre-plumb with the incoming water supply and apply plumber's tape. The PVC shutoff valve will then be connected to that side and please ensure that it's as tight as possible to avoid any leaks. Apply plumber's tape to the third PVC nipple, and then install it onto the other end of the PVC shutoff valve. Be sure that the connection is fully tightened to ensure there are no leaks. A 1-inch corrugated water connector will now be threaded onto the other end of the PVC nipple. Be sure to fully tighten the connection. The well water filter tank will be the first one that connects to the incoming water supply. Position it so that the connections are on the back. Before making any connections, make note of the arrows that are showing the incoming and outgoing water flow on the back of the tank. Bend the corrugated water connector towards the inlet side on the back of the well water filter. Thread the connection and make sure that it's fully tightened. Before making the next connection, it's a good idea to install the drain on the left-hand side of the well water tank head. The easiest way to install the drain line is to temporarily remove the connection. Remove the blue locking tab that's behind the valve, and then go ahead and pull the valve off. Take the hose clamp and slide it over the provided drain line. Press the barbed end of the valve onto the drain line and push it all the way in until it's fully seated. Position the hose clamp over the connection and begin to tighten it. Before fully tightening it, make sure that it's aligned as shown here to avoid it getting in the way when you reconnect the valve. Reattach the valve with the connected drain line and be sure that it pushes in all the way. The blue lock tab will now be reinstalled onto the back of the valve to hold it in place. Run the drain line towards the drain and then trim away the excess but you should be sure to leave yourself a little slack. If you drill two pairs of small holes towards the top of the drain, you can use zip ties to secure the drain line. Thread the zip ties through the openings and then push them in to create a loop inside of the drain. The drain line will then be threaded through those loops. Tighten up the zip ties to secure the drain line and then trim away the excess. Please ensure that there are no kinks or pinches on the drain line to avoid any issues with drainage. Attach a corrugated water connector to the incoming side on the pre-filter. Be sure to fully tighten the connection. Bend the connector so that it's pointing towards the outlet on the well water filter. Go ahead and thread the connection and then make sure that it's fully tightened. The salt-free softening tank will now be introduced. Place it so the connections are facing back. 
please note that the inlet and the outlet sides of this tank are opposite the well water filter. Connect one of the corrugated water connectors to the outlet side of the pre-filter. Be sure to fully tighten the connection. Bend the other end of that connector towards the inlet on the salt-free water softening tank. Thread the connection and then fully tighten it. Connect the fourth water connector to the outlet side on the softening tank and ensure it's fully tightened. Bend the other end of the connector to the other side of the pre-plumb that's leading into the home. Thread the connection and then make sure that it's fully tightened. At this point the system is fully connected, but a few steps are still required before you can start using it. The provided spanner wrench will be required to fully tighten the pre-filter housing to ensure it doesn't leak. The pre-filter mounting bracket has an opening to store the spanner wrench. The power for the well water filter head will now be connected. Plug it into the power port beneath the electronic head that's furthest to the left. It is also recommended that a 9 volt battery be installed to save your settings. To do this, remove the top of the head, locate the battery connector beneath the display, and then plug a 9 volt battery into it. Rest the battery into the tray that's beneath the display, and the cover for the electronic head can be replaced. You are now ready to test your system. While the water is still turned off to the home, turn on the cold water all the way in one of the bathtubs. Ensure the shutoff valve to the system is in the off position. Also ensure that both of the tanks are set to bypass. With the shutoff valve in the off position, go ahead and restore water to the home. Verify that there are no leaks coming from the shutoff valve. If no leaks are detected, go ahead and open the shutoff valve. Water will flow through the tank bypasses and through the pre-filter. Water will also begin to flow into your home. Inspect the tank connections and the pre-filter and ensure there are no leaks. If none are detected, go ahead and turn off the bypass and allow water to flow through your well water filter. The bypass can also be shut off from the salt-free softening tank. This will allow water to flow through it as well. Allow water to flush through your system for 10 minutes. Also note that it's common to see a small amount of sediment during this time. The settings for the electronic head can be programmed using a smartphone. Search for Legacy View in the App Store. Once found, go ahead and install the application. Once installed, go ahead and open the app. The application will then begin scanning for the head. It's called Aeration Filter. Go ahead and select it. To set the time on the unit, go ahead and tap on that tile. A prompt will ask you if you want to set it to the same time as your device. Go ahead and select OK. The regeneration time listed on the right-hand column will also need to be updated. It is recommended to select a time when nobody is using the water in the home. To change the time, simply tap on that tile. A prompt will come up to allow you to change the time. In most circumstances, 2 a.m. should work perfectly. The filter backwash frequency on the lower right-hand column will need to be updated. Go ahead and tap on that tile. On the screen that comes up, you will select 5 days. Then select OK. For the next settings, select the menu icon in the top left corner. Select the advanced settings option. The error charge frequency in the upper left-hand side should be set to 1 day. If not, go ahead and select it. Go ahead and set it to one day and then select OK. On the right column, the backwash time should be set to 10 minutes. If necessary, update it and then select OK. On the left column, the option that says rest should be set to zero. If not, go ahead and correct that field. Air draw on the right hand side should be set to 20 minutes. If not, select it and update it. On the bottom left column, rapid rinse should be set to 5 minutes. If not, go ahead and update it. Your system can now be regenerated. Hit the menu icon in the upper left hand corner. Please note that the water regeneration will take about 45 minutes. During this time, you will not be able to use water to your home. Once you're ready, go ahead and select Regenerate Now from the menu. Confirm the regeneration and it will run for about 45 minutes. Once the regeneration has finished, you are ready to start using your system. Congratulations on your installation!